You know, the difference between the pros and the Joes in sports betting is knowing when to pass on a game. The following games are the ones you should probably leave alone. But if you still want to play these games, let's get an expert's opinion on it. Frank Stamfel is joining us from Sports Grid, and he joins us to, uh, to bring us the, the toss-up plays. Now, these are the plays that we're not going to hold you to, but you've got to do research, research on every game, and sometimes the research rather leaves you with uh, conflicting information. We're starting with the Cardinals game. They're getting 10 and a half in New Orleans. Alvin Kamara is questionable for this game. Would his availability sway your opinion on this game? I think even more than his availability is Drew Brees' availability because they haven't ruled him out. So as of now, both both Alvin Kamara and Drew Brees are questionable and we're getting 10 and a half points. So I think that, that would sway things At this tremendously. Point, though, do you think that the Saints would want to switch from Bridgewater? I don't think that they should, at least not before the bye week. At some point, Drew but Brees, a Hall of Fame quarterback, out of you respect, gotta go back to him. You out of respect, to. you've got to go back to yeah, him. Yeah, but Teddy Bridgewater is playing well right now. They're five and zero under Teddy Bridgewater. But the Cardinals right now are three and zero as well over the past three games in those victories. They're averaging 400 yards of total offense per game. A lot of people didn't know what to expect from Cliff Kingsbury coming into the season, but his system is actually coming along here, and Chase Edmonds running really well. Kyler Murray starting to run a little bit as well. He has double-digit rushing attempts in each of those victories, so I think there's obviously a correlation there. He's starting to run a little bit more, and they're having more success. Uh, if I had to choose this game, I would lean with the Arizona Cardinals getting the points, but there's a lot up in the air with Alvin Kamara and Drew Brees' uh, questionable yeah, stats. Both those, both big names for uh, for the Saints. All right, the Rams, 13-point favorites in London against Cincinnati. What does it say about a Bengals team that here we are this late in the season when the lines are usually so sharp? <laughs> Get 13 points. They can't do anything right now, Steve. <laughs> like, are, they the, are they the least impressive team in the NFL? Yeah, I would say alongside uh, the Miami Dolphins, at least, you know, the Dolphins have been a little bit more competitive recently. And I know the Bengals were competitive early on in the season, but they've really kind of cashed it in at this point. A.J. Green not going to play in this game as well. Joe Mixon, how about this? He has 18 rushing attempts for 12 yards over the past two games. They just can't muster anything on offense. The defense is not good either. I still have my question marks when it comes to the Los Angeles Rams. Jared Goff, although the, the Rams got right last week against the Atlanta Falcons, the offense still did not look right right to me he did not complete a lot of easy passes so uh, I have some hesitation here laying this many points but if I had to choose something I cannot back the Cincinnati Bengals right now and I would lean with the Los Angeles Rams especially with the history that Dalton has had in spotlight games whether it's Thursday night games Monday night games Sunday games I think that we can consider a London game a spotlight game and Dalton's history in those games has been horrendous yeah I think it's a good point and you know getting Jalen Ramsey to the Rams defense does not help Andy Dalton's cause either so he's going to be locking down one of Tyler Boyd or Auden Tate that's going to make life just that more difficult for Andy Dalton all right the Broncos getting five and a half points in Indianapolis the Colts haven't gotten a ton of respect from the public or the Sharps do you think that's going to change as we get deeper into the season now I think the advanced metrics show that the Indianapolis Colts might have gotten a little bit lucky to this point because in yards per play, they're not an impressive team on offense or defense. DVOA numbers say that the Colts defense has not performed well, but they're still winning games. And again, I think that's a testament to Frank Reich. But ultimately, a lot of people are on the Denver Broncos here. This is a tough game for me to kind of figure out. That's mm -hmm. why it's part of the toss-up segment here. And if I had to choose, I would lean with the Broncos because the matchups to me say that Cortland Sutton, who is now the number one wide receiver for the Denver Broncos, they ship out Emmanuel Sanders, has one of the best matchups this week going up against Pierre Desir of the Indianapolis Colts. And the rushing attack of the Denver Broncos between Philip Lindsay and Royce Freeman should have success on the ground against the Indianapolis Colts as well. But this is an Indianapolis team. You know, we were talking about the surprising teams in the NFL. You know, I, I posed it to you, the Bills or the Colts, and the Colts have to be the most surprising team because we thought that the season was dead as soon as Andrew Luck ret retired. Absolutely. You lose your franchise quarterback less than a month before the season season starts and it's really just a testament to Frank Reich and he puts his players in a position to succeed. Jacoby Brissett has performed really well coming off a game where he just threw four touchdowns in a divisional game against the Houston Texans. That's why this game is so tough. You don't really want to bet against the Colts the way that they're playing right now, but the advanced matchups, the numbers show that the Denver Broncos should have some success in this spot. All right, I understand why you put this next game in the toss-ups. The Bears, three and a half point home favorites against the Chargers. LA has lost three straight games. The Bears have lost two in a row. This is going to be a get-right game for somebody. So which side do the metrics support? 
I'm going to go with the Los Angeles Chargers here, Steve. But again, this is a tough game. I was backing the Chargers last week. I was on the Chargers money line, so it's really tough to watch the end of that game where Melvin Gordon's trying to run it in on the goal line and he ends up fumbling it away. Oh. But the truth remains that in the first four games of the season, the Chargers were 2-2, two and two, and they were averaging just around 23 points per game on offense. And that was with Austin Eckler getting a lot of the work. And over the past three games, they have lost each of those, and they're averaging right around 17 points per game on offense. So they need to go back to using Austin Eckler more. And it's a good matchup for him going up against the Bears defense who are all of a sudden getting lit up in the run game because Akeem Hicks, one of their best defensive linemen, is no longer with the team. He's hurt. And they're allowing the second most receptions per game to opposing running backs. Austin Eckler, again, there should have some success. So I don't really want to bet on Mitchell Trubisky. The Chargers keep finding new ways to lose games. But if I had to choose one team, I would side with the Los Angeles Chargers. They're finding new ways because they're putting too much faith in the old running back as opposed to, to Eckler. Eckler just gets so many receptions out of the backfield. When you get him in open space, that's where he's most dangerous. And I think that was being proven early on. And you're right. They probably need to get back into that mode. All right, the Seahawks, seven-point dogs in Atlanta. But the Falcons star quarterback Matt Ryan didn't practice Wednesday didn't practice Thursday he didn't practice Friday either did not his ankle is to be evaluated on Saturday is there an opportunity to find an angle here with his injury yeah, I mean, this number is going to continue to get bet up the further we get into the week uh, without knowing Matt Ryan's status. So they're saying that he could play on this because he is a pocket quarterback and he's not someone who's going to try and get out and run. And they're going to just have to, you know, make a bunch of quick throws. This, this is a tough game right now because... If Matt Schaub is the quarterback, the last time we saw Matt Schaub as a starting quarterback, he was throwing pick sixes left and right. Uh, and right now, Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks, he is the MVP, the leading MVP candidate in the NFL. So, you know, I think with Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf, they have matchups that they can exploit against this Falcons defense. But there's so much going on right now with the health of the Falcons, the fact that their defense has played as bad as it is. It seems like they've really just kind of checked out at this point in the season. But with the health of Matt Ryan kind of up in the air right now, that's why that's what makes it's a toss-up. It's a war of attrition. The NFL season has finally the Browns, the Patriots, New England, 11 and a half point home favorites here. Are the Browns worth a double digit, or I should say, are the Patriots worth a double digit favorite against the Browns? Or is that Monday night drubbing of the Jets creating a little bit of a recency bias here? I'm going to go with the latter there. I think, you know, everyone just saw what the Patriots did on national television. Not that we needed to, because as They're of right undefeated. now. They're undefeated. They have the best defense in the NFL. Through seven games of the season, <laughs> they have a historic defense. It's not right. just, you know, one of the best defenses in the NFL. I mean, they are doing historic things right now. But this is a big number. Honestly, Steve, I've had a tough time figuring out the Patriots and the Browns this year. That's why this is part of the toss-up segment. Because in my opinion, the Cleveland Browns should just be leaning on Nick Chubb in this matchup. Do not give Tom Brady an opportunity to beat you and frankly the Patriots offense has not really looked great so far Sony Michelle running into the back of his offensive line a lot so far this season he's averaging under you know three and a half yards per carry so far this season and you know the Cleveland Browns are getting back their starting corners in Denzel Ward and Greedy Williams so this matchup is really all over the place for me because the Patriots you don't really want to bet against them the way that they're playing right now but the Cleveland Browns coming off the bye as an underdog if they just lean on Nick Chubb you can see them keeping this game close but do you trust Freddie Kitchens to do the right thing? Well, you're seeing flashes of a Browns team that was overhyped at the beginning of the season, and now they're starting to see that offense kind of come to fruition here. All right, that's Frank's toss-up plays for the weeks. Make sure you catch our other segments on his top plays and his leans. For Frank Stanfield of SportsGrid, I'm Steve Overmeyer, and this is Finalysis.